The space agency NASA is renowned for its stunning pictures of the universe taken by the Hubble and James Webb Space Telescopes. Well, now you can actually listen to those images. What you're listening to there is actually a soundscape that's been generated by an image of the centre of the Milky Way galaxy. It's part of a groundbreaking sonification research project that allows people who are blind or living with low vision to experience the wonders of space. Dr Kimberly Arkand is an astronomer with NASA and a visualisation scientist at the Harvard and Smithsonian Centre for Astrophysics. What you just listened to was the inner 400 light years around the very centre of our Milky Way galaxy where this supermassive black hole lurks. And what we've done is we've assigned different kinds of light to different sounds. So the Chandra X-ray Observatory, which is NASA's great observatory for X-ray light, is in that sort of high-pitched glockenspiel sound, and that's all the high-energy light. And then the Hubble Space Telescope, the sort of medium-range light, is that plucky violin that you've heard. And then the lowest level light is the infrared light from the Spitzer Space Telescope that's played as like a soft piano. And as you move across the data, you're hearing these moments of little X-ray binaries, which are like two stars kind of dancing together. You're hearing little areas of like these pockets of cooler gas and dust. And then at the end, you're hearing this little crescendo where that supermassive black hole lurks. Yeah, I've seen the the images on your website and it's it's quite something to behold as you watch a vertical line move from left to right across the screen and as it sort of runs through all those data points that you've mentioned, that's that's how you get the, sa the sound, isn't it? Yeah, so it's just a mathematical mapping. I've worked with my colleagues at System Sounds, uh, Matt Russo and Andrew Santaquita, to be able to take these images that so many people get to enjoy and just add another layer of of experience through sound. And we do that with our colleagues that are blind or low vision. But we found that people around the world, whether they're sighted or not, just have really enjoyed them. Yeah, what's the feedback that you've had from from those who are vision impaired or, or low vision? Yeah, well, we actually did a study to understand how people would respond to these sonifications. And I can say that both sighted audiences and people who are blind or low vision really immensely enjoyed the sonifications as another way of, of knowing. And both groups really reported this idea of wanting to listen more, wanting to learn more. And it's just a great reason to be able to continue this type of project. Um, and specifically, people who are blind or low vision have said that it's a way for them to mentally map these images to be able to feel included as part of the universe, as part of the scientific enterprise of studying space. And, and do you think we could use this this kind of uh, technology, this sonification in, in other disciplines of science? Oh, 100%. I have a dear colleague uh, and friend, Wanda Diaz. She's an astronomer and a computer scientist, and she uses sonification as a research tool so that she can study stellar populations. And I have another friend, Dr. Gary Foran, um, who I believe is actually from Australia, and he's currently in Japan, who also uses sonification to be able to study things. And there's many different kinds of sciences that use it to different um, geologies, different oceanography sciences, different kinds of um, sciences that include chemistry and biology use sonifications, but it is a newer tool in comparison with like the telescope or the microscope. I know you have a favourite sonification. It's been created from <laughs> images of the remains of the supernova Cassiopeia. Let's have a listen. Kim, as we listen to that, why is this sound meaningful for you? Well, Cassiopeia A was the first object that we really got to study in depth with the Chandra X-ray Observatory, which celebrates its 25th anniversary or launch anniversary this summer. And so I've been looking at this data for a very long time. And 
it's an immensely deep data set of this exploded star, this star that collapsed and then just exploded its guts out all over the place and is <laughs> kind of careening through and expanding this, this shell of debris out in the universe. And it's so beautiful. Like the data is so wonderful that you can fingerprint it and you can learn where the iron is, where the calcium, where the silicon and the sulfur are. So you can create this chemical emission map. And that's a great way to understand ourselves, right? The iron in our blood, the calcium in our bones, those come from previous generations of stars that exploded. So this one has very particular value for me. Yeah. Yes.